Hey guys, so this is David Staples, and I'm back today to talk about how to subnet. Uh, I know that this is a topic that I teach in a lot of the various classes that we do, uh, whether it's the Network Plus or the Security Plus uh, from CompTIA. Uh, we also have to cover this, of course, in the CCNA classes. Uh, so there's a variety of different certifications that rely on needing to know subnetting. So I uh, figured, you know, I've got a demonstration using Microsoft Excel, but since I'm actually in a classroom this week, and uh, have some spare time after class is over. Figured, let's go ahead and actually go through it on a, a whiteboard where it's a little bit easier. So, I uh, hope that this is helpful for uh, trying to figure out how to actually do subnetting. Uh, all this stuff, we're pretty much going to be sticking with the uh, Class C address range, which is basically your 192.1, or basically 192 and above uh, for the first octet uh, in IPv4. So, uh, let's go ahead and get into this here. So, you know, when we talk about IP addresses, we know that we've got uh, four octets of numbers here, and they all range from 0 to 255, right? So, for example, I might have 192.168.1.15, just as one example. So, with this IP address, each of these numbers can range from 0 to 255, and so on and so forth. So, with this IP address, you'll also see that we define a subnet mask. If you've ever looked at the settings in Windows 7 or Windows 8 or 8.1 or Windows 10 or you know, a Linux or a Mac computer, you'll notice that there's a subnet mask there. And that subnet mask basically helps us determine what network that computer is a part of. So the default subnet mask here for our 192.168 Class C private IP address is 255.255.255.0. So essentially how this works is, again, just starting with the, the very basics here, the 255s basically mask off the portion of the IP address that relate to the network versus the portion of the IP address that relate to the host. So here I can say my first three octets are 255, so I know that 192.168.1 defines my network and then dot 15 defines my host. So with this subnet mask, any computer that's on a network that has an IP address that has of 192.168.1. anything is going to be on that network. So if I also had say 192.168.1.240 for instance and my subnet mask was 255.255.255.0. So I compare or mask off my network portion here. I compare 192.168.1 versus 192.168.1. I can say yes, those are on the same network. So that means that I can actually use a switch to make these two computers talk together. I don't need some sort of a router to actually translate between those two networks or communicate forward the packets back and forth between the two networks. So that's why this is important. So let's go ahead and change this around just a little bit. Go ahead and just get rid of these lines real quick. So let's say that I've got this computer here and then I've got another computer that's at say 192.168.2 dot, we'll just say 16. So are these two on the same network? You know, can I re basically just hook both of these up to a switch, just a regular layer 2 switch and have them communicating? Well, of course, I compare 192.168.1 against 192.168.2. Since I'm using the same default subnet mask here, I can say, no, those are not on the same network. But now, there are times where you might see subnet masks that look a little bit different. Have you ever seen one that says maybe 255.255.255.128? Or maybe a dot .192? Or maybe a dot .240? So those are all what we call custom subnet masks, or maybe variable length subnet masks. So let's take a look at what the subnet mask looks like in binary. I know that my Again, we're going to stick with 255.255.255.0. We're going to stick with our class C range here. So 
Let me just move the mouse on my computer here so it doesn't freeze so I can see what I'm writing on the screen. So we've got 255.255.255.0, which in binary means this looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, dot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, dot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, dot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is what that looks like in binary, right? I know that the number 255 in binary is eight ones. I know that zero in binary is all zeros. And this is why we actually say that IPv4 is actually a 32-bit IP address. Because we take the 8 bits here, 8 bits here, 8 bits here, and 8 bits here. I know that 8 times 4 is 32. So this is our 32-bit subnet mask in binary. And then this is our 32-bit subnet mask in the decimal notation, a base 10 mathematical system that pretty much we're all used to, right? So let's say that my network administrator comes to me, or maybe I am the network administrator, and we say, okay, I've got this group of 256 total IP addresses. Anything that starts with 192.168.1. whatever. And I need to divide that into two networks. Maybe I've got a finance department and an HR department that need to be able to share this particular network. Well, what I can do is I can actually break that in half and make them two logical networks so that even if I've got them all connected to the same switch, they're not going to be all able to talk to each other. My HR computers won't be able to talk to finance, finance won't be able to talk to HR, and that basically helps maintain the security of the uh, different files on that network. Now that's not to say that that's the only method of security that we should use, but of course that is one way that we can implement some security uh, moving in that direction. So again, we'll take our 192.168.1. whatever here. So in order to change this. I'm going to make this a little bit longer here as well. So dot one dot x. So in order to break this IP address range in half, I essentially need to change the subnet mask to mask off different bits. So what I can do is actually take the zeros here and let's just look at this last zero here just in binary. So I know that there's eight bits there, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And essentially I need to start changing some of these bits to mask off other parts of my IP address. So if I was to change this bit right up here to a one, and we'll change it over here since this is a little closer to me, I know that that now changes this number here to something else, right? So let's look at what these values are in, in binary. So I know that this placeholder over here has a value of 1, and 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. So this number in binary is actually going to be 255.255.255 from our first three octets here. And then this last number is actually going to be .128. Now the thing with these bits with subnet masks is that my ones are always going to start from the left, my zeros are always going to start from the right, and they're going to meet somewhere in the middle. So I can't have something like this. I'm not going to have 1001000. Not for a subnet mask. I can have that for an IP address. But my subnet masks, the zeros always start from the left, the ones always sorry, the ones always start from the left, the zeros always start from the right. So this is a valid subnet mask. So then you say, okay, well, how do I know how many networks that breaks it into and how many IP addresses it breaks it into? So there's a shortcut here that I've seen some other people use that I've started using in my methods of teaching. So essentially to find out how many IP addresses are in this range, I basically just have to look at the value of the last placeholder that's turned into a 1. So here I know that I have 128 total IP addresses per network over here. So this actually creates the ranges of 192.168.1.0 through. I know if I'm starting counting with 0, then the last number has to be 1 less, right? So 192.168.1.127. And then I also create a network of 192.168.1.127. 
192.168.1.258 through 192.168.1.255. So I know that that basically creates two networks. Now, of course, remember, I, you've probably heard me use the term total IP addresses, right? So this is not the number of usable IP addresses for hosts or clients or computers on this network. This is the number of total IP addresses, because in every network, you've got a network ID, which we see is the very first IP address here, and then you've got a broadcast IP, which is the very last IP address in that range. So if we wanted to find out how many usable hosts are on there, I simply say I've got 128 total IP addresses. I subtract two. That means that I can actually put 126 computers on each of these networks using the subnet mask of 255.255.255.128. And so then we look at what if we were to change that subnet mask to something like change this next to 0 to 1. So we know that that's going to change the decimal notation here, right? It's no longer going to be 128. I know that 128 plus 64 is how much? As if you said 192, you'd be correct. So this is the next valid sub possible subnet mask. So using the logic that we used earlier, thinking to yourself, how many IP addresses are there per network? We find the value of the last one here. We say, okay, there's 64 total IP addresses per network, which means there's how many usable clients? But well, we take away two. Remember, we've got the network ID, then the broadcast ID. So there are 62 computers that we could put on any network that had a subnet mask of 255.255.255.192. So what would the IP address full range be of the, our first network using this? We'd have 192.168.1.0 through. I know that if I've got 64 total IPs starting and counting at zero, it goes through 192.168.1.63, right? Then our next one would be 192.168.1.64 through 192.168.1.127. And of course, we'd keep on going from there. So the easy way that I typically use to, to figure out how many networks this is going to create using these subnet masks is I'll take this binary form. Remember we said we take the total number of IP addresses based upon the position of our last one on that left-hand side. So I know that there's 256 total IP addresses in this entire range here, right? Then I basically say, okay, well, let's just divide by 64 because that's the total number of IP addresses that we're using here. I know that 64 goes in 256 four times, so I'm creating four networks here. So let's go ahead and move on one more bit. Just keep on with our practice here. So let's go ahead and change this zero here to a one, which means that my last octet over here, the 192, changes to what? You said 224? You're absolutely correct. So this makes our subnet mask 255.255.255.224, which means how many total IP addresses do we have in each of these networks? The position of the one, we've got 32 IP addresses in each network, right? Which means I can put how many computers on there? If you said 30, that's absolutely right. So I can put 30 computers on each of these networks. And so looking at the range of IP addresses that I would have for the first couple of networks here, I know that this would be 192.168.1.0 through and I'll just basically draw a line here because we know that this, the first part is the same, right? So this is going to go through dot 31. My next range is basically going to be the same thing, except this is going to be uh, dot 32 through 192.168.1 dot. I know that this goes through 63. And then, of course, my next one would start at 64 and so on. So let's add one more piece of information here, which is what we call CIDR notation. CIDR is C-I-D-R, which is the classless interdomain routing. 
Uh, you might also hear it called VLSM, Variable Length Subnet Masks. Uh, so if you've ever seen an IP address written as 192.168.1. Uh, we'll just say 4 slash 27. This is basically what we call CIDR notation, CIDR, Classless Interdomain Routing. People go, well, how do you get slash 27? Does that mean I can have 27 computers on the network, or uh, what is that? So, of course, that's not how many computers we have on the network. But essentially, that is simply counting up the number of ones in the binary form of our subnet mask. So if I have a slash 27, I know that I've got eight ones here, eight ones here, eight ones here. That gives me 24. So slash 24 is actually the default subnet mask for our class C. So I know that I need three more ones to give me 27 on top of the 24 I already had for the first three octets, right? So this is essentially what that subnet mask looks like in binary. And of course, if I look at the decimal notation, it's 128 plus 64 is 192 plus 32 gives me 224. And I could write this as you know 192.168.1. whatever the IP address was for this particular host, and then slash 27 instead of actually writing out the subnet mask. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one here. Let's just say that I turned this one to a one. I know that this is no longer a slash 27, right? So 128 and 64 is 192. Add 32, that takes us to 224. Add 16, that takes us to 240. And of course, if I change this subnet mask up here, all I've got to do is just count the number of ones, and I know that this is a slash 28, right? So again, I can write this subnet mask as either 255.255.255.240, or I can just write it as a slash 28. Either way, I want to refer to it as just fine. Okay, so that is our subnetting with figuring out how many total IP addresses there are, how many usable hosts there are, as well as how many networks we create, as well as variable length subnet masking and CIDR notation or classless interdomain routing, again that's CIDR. So I hope you found this information useful and that uh, you'll be able to use it in passing your exams and perhaps even using it in real life. Uh, I know that you know a lot of network admins use the uh, subnet calculators uh, that whenever you need to actually you know, subnet out a, a network, all you've got to do is just pull one of those up online uh, unfortunately, you don't have those on the exam, so you do actually need to be able to do this stuff on, on the board behind me uh, when it comes to taking that Network Plus or Security Plus or your CCNA uh, or various other certifications as well. Uh, so again, my name is David Staples. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and uh, feel free to check out some of my other videos. Uh, some of them are IT related, some of them are project management related, uh, some of them are simply travel related. Uh, I might even throw up a few opinion videos here and there. Or, uh, maybe even some gambling videos when I'm going to the casinos or playing some lottery tickets or, uh, or whatever. I just like to have some fun when I'm not actually sitting in front of the, the computer, which I tend to do way too much as it is. Uh, but anyhow, again, thank you for watching. Uh, tune in to, to some of my other videos, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed the, the video that I've created here and found it useful. Have a great afternoon, great morning, great evening, whatever it is where you're at. Take care, guys.